the necessity of reducing college tuition fees by increasing taxes. Parents and learners always think about how much education would cost at their selected colleges. Tuition fees typically vary depending on the course and the school that a student attends. However, tuition costs keep rising due to the massive number of individuals competing for a college degree. Higher enrollment rates have resulted in an increase in grant and loan programs and a need to boost campus and faculty operations budgets. It, in turn, has led to a reduction in state funding from the government. As a result, students are forced to choose classes that they do not want, in places they would not rather be. As such, it may be hard to eliminate tuition fees. This essay seeks to explain why it is necessary to raise taxes to lower college tuition by looking at various viewpoints in support of and against the suggestion. Currently, it is almost impossible to attend any college of one's choice because of financial restraints. Increasing taxes would mean that students will be able to join any school regardless of the costs, thus creating equality among all learners in a particular country or state despite their financial status. According to Freeman and Reed, a rise in educational achievement is correlated with a significant benefit over time for taxpayers. It means that if many students manage to complete their studies and graduate, they are likely to increase their chances of employment and receive better wages. More professionals are also more likely to start considering positions in other specific regions at lower pay than they could earn anywhere. Therefore, an increased labor force in specific regions makes it cheaper and more accessible for businesses to find skilled employees and lower employment creation costs. The other outcome is a reduction in student college debts. According to Bartle, on average, most American students usually graduate with significant sums of debt, thus impeding their likelihood of working in their dream jobs or organizations. In short, the huge debts often lead to a negative impact on the graduates' financial lives in different ways, such as disqualification for specific posts. Background checks are usually performed by businesses, particularly if one applies for a top position in an organization. However, in a situation where a student has not taken any college loans, they increase the chances of securing employment. Apart from that, Debts delay life targets since they are influential in one's economic freedom and standard of living. Arrears may also determine what one can achieve or not within a targeted period. In the end, a qualified person may be forced to consider venturing into a different career, which does not align with his or her educational credentials to survive instead of gaining satisfaction. To curb this, it is necessary to increase taxes to avoid college tuition outstanding balances. No doubt reduced college tuition fees may increase the appetite and passion for education because of affordability. Learning is usually considered by many parents and organizations as an investment, especially if the costs of attaining knowledge are high. However, with reduced costs, many people will be inclined to learn because of their passion for achieving their dreams and not for monetary purposes. It will eventually lead to a more satisfying society along professional lines. According to Bartle, there is a considerable degree of proof that a reduced risk of illegal activity is correlated with the quality of education. With individuals pursuing their desired courses, there will be a reduced crime rate leading to a safer society. It is, therefore, necessary to increase the taxes for students to access quality education. However, there have been opposing opinions on the idea of increasing taxes to cater to college tuition. Freeman and Reed explain that initial federal efforts to improve higher education's affordability contributed to non-transparent pricing and fueled increased costs by college administrators. It will even worsen the situation if the burden is passed to the taxpayers. Furthermore, colleges charge different rates based on a student's capability to pay. Hence, learning institutions can easily discriminate against pricing because they consider the incomes of families. For instance, the tax return details of students and their parents are usually required by schools to ascertain their level of earnings to increase the tuition fee. It is wrong to allow colleges to overcharge their students based on their family backgrounds. Most academic institutions argue that learners already have convenient access to government loans, an avenue that can enable them to comfortably raise the required tuition fee, notwithstanding their financial status. 
Thus, as an alternative to increasing taxes, those against the idea argue that both the federal and state governments can instead formulate policies that control the fees colleges can charge students. In conclusion, raising taxes to cater to the needy students who qualify to join colleges will immensely benefit many families as more students will be able to get a better education. Therefore, educational experts and other concerned agencies should formulate policies that will ensure that all students join their desired colleges and universities to fulfill their dreams. However, considering the massive number of needy bright students who qualify for various courses, the policies will have to be accompanied by a heavy investment, which can be realized by raising taxes.